Hello everybody and welcome to ILR Tier 2, Race 10 of Season 4, this season on the Xbox platform and here we are for the British Grand Prix, the home of British Motor Racing here and let's just run down, we're in the lobby currently as we stand and we're just waiting for qualifying to get underway so in the meantime let's talk about the championship as it stands so Currently in the lead of the championship, once again, and we're mentioning him, mentioning him quite a lot this, time, this season so far, is mid C15. He currently is leading the championship in the McLaren, 118 points. Behind him, Jamie has been on a bit of a run of form recently. He's had podiums in the last three races. Um, lots of um, podiums, actually. It's been, yeah, how many podiums have we had? We've had four, six podiums this season so far. And he's on 101 points. He's only 17 points away. So he's actually now Mizzy's closest challenger. Um, it was Chris Michael Jones for quite a bit this season. But now it actually is Jamie, who's been on a bit of a bit of a run recently. And now in third place, we've got Chris Michael Jones. He um, is on 92 points. I mean, recently, did perform a little bit slightly. Um, but he's um, down 26 points behind the leader. And you've got Bromson in fourth place after that very... Very unlucky race in um, Austria. Didn't go quite well for him. He's down there in fourth place, 32 points behind mid Zealand Championship. Josu in fifth place in the Red Bull. He currently on 69 points with F1 Maestro in seventh place with 60 points. Ewa Palzeri in eighth with 56 points. Ernst Bonkers in ninth on um, 52 points and we've got T.I. Dutchman on 48 points in 10th and then the rest of the order got Kushmania in 11th with 37 points um, Tomas in 12th with 20 points um, LA Revolutions in 13th with 20 points as well and we've got Ayala Bibin in 14th with 6 points Flying Wazzy in 15th with 5 points and then we've got 2 points for Joker 2 points for Mighty um, Dylan Irish Racing is on 1 point and Dragon Pro is on no points so that is the championship standings as they stand going in into the mid part of the season uh, of the 21 race calendar um, we're in the 10th race we're just about going to be entering into the mid part of the season very soon so that is the driver's championship a constructor championship again looking pretty tight between McLaren and Ferrari nine points separating the two teams McLaren currently on top of 107 points 187 points sorry with Ferrari on 178 points Haas doing pretty well in third place as well pretty close behind too actually 30 points behind Pelzeri and Jamie Performing pretty well recently, and um, they're only 30 points back in third place. Force India in fourth, 112 points. Red Bull in 82. 72 for Mercedes, which is a bit of a fight between Red Bull and Mercedes um, for fifth place. Sauber in seventh for 37 points. And then we've got Williams in eighth for 27 points. And then we've got Renault in ninth for 22 points. And Torosso are on 14 points. Respectively. So that is a Constructors' Championship as things stand going into this race. Um, so that is everything covered. Um, and obviously last weekend we had, uh, last week we had Jamie win his first race of the season. We've had, I think, eight different winners out of the first nine races, which is incredible. It shows how competitive this season is so far. Um, just again, it's just going to show the quality of drivers we have and, uh, how a lot of the grid can go for wins going into each weekend. And it means it shows it's a bit of unpredictability there. Um, mid season has been very consistent this season, has had a little bit of a drop of form recently, but managed to get some good podiums out of it. He goes into this race off sea, wanting to bounce back after a couple of you know, mediocre rounds. But we've got, you know, for Jamie, he's on. He's the form man currently. And I, I think definitely going into this, into this weekend, I think into this race, I put my money on Jamie. He's, got, he's on some real good form. And he's taken a lot of momentum forwards um, since getting his first podium in China. And he's just grown and grown and grown and grown over the course of the season. That's what we've seen with a lot of these drivers. They've actually grown this season. And that's what I think was very exciting from the opening race in Australia. That we've been able to see the growth in these drivers. Anyway, any moment now we'll be able to go into qualifying. And we'll be able to talk about the qualifying get into the in some lovely action. And uh, we'll see how things go. Uh, let's have a look at the stream. So I am in the chat, so if you guys want to put things in the chat and you want to talk to me, that's not a problem. I can answer any of your questions. And also, if you guys have any questions in regards to um, just qualifying, in qualifying, any questions in qualifying, or any questions you have, we have podium interviews at the end of the session, end of the race. Um, you guys can actually um, put some questions in the chat and I'll be able to ask them to top three. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, I'll give you a basic shout out um, after the race is done. You know, if you've got any questions for the the top three after the race, then we can always go with that. And all right, it's racing, please. No rain again. It doesn't want to rain again after a very wet Austrian Grand Prix. It was a very interesting race, Austria. Um, 
yeah, all sorts of things happened there, and I think a lot of people struggled in those conditions. And it was a wet race completely, and a wet qualifying as well. Actually, qualifying was the worst. So, um, Irish Racing's there, not wanting any rain so far. Just waiting for us to get going. We're currently on 19, so 18 people racing. Um, so I'm just waiting for us to actually get going finally. We are just come past half past seven. We normally get in the way at this time, so we should be going there. But, um, as I was been saying, you know, really, I definitely truly believe that if uh, the guy who's on form currently, Jamie, He's the one to look at, and um, the Haas drive has been really on form recently, so um, I'm looking forward to seeing what this race can bring, because obviously each race, we have all this, this unpredictability. We don't know who's going to be where, and we don't know you know who's going to be able to be challenging for victories, and a lot of people can challenge for victories. And we've seen this season so far, you know, eight people um, out of the first nine races have won races. And Bonkers is saying, I'd be hoping for rain. Yeah, I mean... I think everyone, I think uh, kind of a mix of people. Some people like the rain, some people don't like the rain so much. So um, I personally don't mind. I, I mean, I don't drive, so I don't really mind. I don't really care. But I think wet races are good for us as viewers. Um, we can see how, you know, as viewers, we can actually go and go, you know, again, a bit more of a strategic race. That's what we get from a, from a wet race. So if... I I personally like the conditions where it starts off wet and it dries out and strategies flown in. Or I like it the other way around where it starts off dry and then obviously the wet, wet weather comes in and obviously people don't quite know what tyres to go on. I like those sort of races where there's a lot of strategy involved and having to think on your feet a bit more. I think those races are very good to watch. You know, if you look at real life races, for example, everyone can go to Canada 2011 and go, well, that is the race that... Um, you know, had all the strategy involved and everything involved. So, anyway, let's go into qualifying right now. Let's stop, let's stop the riffraff and get into the meat, the nit and gritty, and let's hope for a dry qualifying session. And I think actually a dry qualifying and a dry race would be quite good around here because lots of overtaking opportunities at Silverstone. Uh, we've got you know a couple of long back straights, lots of DRS zones here as well. Uh, plenty of op uh, opportunities to overtake and get game position. So I'm looking forward to some great racing here um, at this fantastic circuit. The home of motor racing. So hopefully we'll be able to go in very soon. Irish racing says, I don't mind inter conditions, but for wet conditions is horrific. Yeah, I think for wet on this game isn't great. Plus, I, I, from what I've driven of it, I don't like it either. From what I've done a lot of a lot of Korean races and stuff like that. I mean, um, I'm not a big fan of the full wet conditions. I prefer the intermediate conditions as well, to be honest. And they're a bit more easier to adapt to. Um, well, hopefully, we're going to get our first card coming to circuit any time soon. And you can see it's very sunny here, so in so it's going to be a dry session. So we really see these guys go for it. But as we've seen in uh, previous qualifying sessions of the season, a lot of the drivers choose to go on the kind of the harder set uh, of tyres and qualify on hard on the two sets of compounds that are in. So we've got Dragon Program on the circuit. The first guy out on the circuit, followed by Williams as well behind him. So we'll get our first sort of idea of where people are. Dragon Pro would be a good, interesting guy to have a look at. His pace at Austria wasn't actually that bad. Actually, pretty, he wasn't too bad at Austria, so we'll see how he does in the Sauber. He's weaving those tyres a lot, as you can see. So he's just trying to get some heat in them, and uh, he's weaving, weaving pretty, uh, pretty drastically. Actually, indeed, to get some tyre pressure in, tyre heat in there. But definitely going to be one to watch in terms of strategy. As I said, you know, uh, we'll see where who people, you know, if people qualify on the harder compound. I mean, that makes strategy interesting. But you know, if it's a wet race, we don't know the conditions for this race at all. I don't have any idea. So there's chance of rain, yes, there can be a chance of rain, but if, and that does change the full game a little bit um, going into qualifying, because uh, if it does rain in the race, people are not going to qualify on the harder compound, the soft com off the tyre, they're going to go on the soft, 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 soft compound to get a good position, and then they'll have a good position at the end of the day. So, Graham Brook is coming to the end of his first outlap, and he's moving pretty drastically, I mean, quite heavily, to get any sort of heat in those um, tyres. Let's go around into the final chicane now. 
And I don't know my um, my uh, my corner names, unfortunately. So bear with me a little bit. I know um, old turn one. Anyway, here he goes. He fires out the last corner into turn one. It's trying to pull with it. Turn one in seventh gear. A little bit of a lift actually initially. So he's trying to grip a little bit. And he's actually gone off the circuit. And he's backed off straight away. So here's a bit that's already been abandoned. Um, let's have a look at uh, Marshall is out there currently as well. So this is a good, uh, good guy to actually watch him on board because he'll be the, the sort of first benchmark here in qualifying. So go on board with him. Three turn one, flat out. Now in turn three, breaks it to the middle down into third gear, hits it precisely. Then going to turn it into the left part, down the second gear, up the first gear actually. Now third, now fourth. A little bit of overstep in the exit, just going to find his line. So a little bit on the curb, and the gear edge down this back. Straight the the Breaks up to the ball once again down into the fourth gear. And I think he backed out of this already, so he's already backed out. Uh, he ain't too hard, I don't think. Or is he? Yeah, he's in pushing that too hard, to be honest. So he's backed out of that one. Who else is out there currently? Let's have a little look. So we've got TR Dutchman. He, in the other fourth gear, is kind of over that here. Through back into Beckett's complex. Very fast on the speed cars. Then the second gear number. Fifth gear. Again, taking it very gently, so he isn't pushing it either. So no one's really giving me anything um, to feast my eyes on. What about Midzi? He's currently the current champion leader now. He is entering the Magnus Beckett section. DRS down this back straight. You should see a lot of opening opportunities down here as well. Now, Grand Rates before the Premier Board. Dylan has gone top of the day, 5 but no, not by Midzi, so too bad to start off with. Now Midzi into the final chicane, down in third gear. And now active split in the uh, trace of the two. And I've got some light swings in point one for Midzi, but that lap actually hasn't counted in the end. That does for his own teammates in a very similar lap indeed. Trace of point one for him as well. Who else is out there currently? So Chris Updong outlapped as well. Uh, is Maestro on a fast one? He's going to come and do another one, isn't he? Rums is like the Dutchman is out there on a lap. So let's ball with TR Dutchman. Got some very good pace. He's joined in Monaco and he's pretty good there. And uh, he's been, yeah, pretty much he's been there and thereabouts. He's getting better and better. He's got a pretty good I think, in Austria as well. So that's been doing a superb job so far. Uh, he's been the gone again. Magnus Beck is now for the Cindy driver. SDA takes it nicely. Keeps it in safe gear. Give a good exit here. Alright, oh, exit. DRS. Now right hand up. Basically, Cindy will walk down into fifth gear. Hugs in her nice and don't know where to right for the limit. Now into the last K. Very tricky this one. Down into third gear. A bit of an oversteer, actually understeer there, the car wasn't quite clipping in. Now into the last corner, and across the line he comes, going to go 27.8. So he has lost in that place, he can be 8 currently. So not great for him, pretty close to the top so far. Jamie in our lap now, uh, last race is winner. Yeah, he might be one to watch here, let's go with Jamie and see how he goes about his lap. So need a good exit from this corner here because it's actually up for this kind of a very long straight a little bit of the corner for our corner. So let's see how it takes it the number four has. Probably gets out of the way very nicely for him and he breaks down the three board. Down into full gear. Hits it inside nicely and now in down into third gear for the long right hander. Be very patient with the to get on too early. So get a little over steer and got a pretty good exit. Now this actually this used to be old turn one. Top. Top flat out now in these modern day cars. In eighth gear. A little bit on the car, but it's kind of tipped the rear out a little bit, but it's okay. That's the bags and beckets. Here's the three. Flat out in eighth gear, down in seventh, and down in fifth for the last part. Cuts his head nicely, gets a decent exit, gets the DRS nicely. I've traced him point two in the middle section, so we have a pretty decent lap from Jamie so far. Now we head into the right hand of it, just after the gear board, down in the sixth gear. Now into the last corner, now last cane, he's in the gear shape, pretty nicely. <coughs> Pardon me. Down in the third gear. Now we've got a decent run to the line, let's see what it's going to be for the house driver at 26.7. That puts him just in second 
plays behind the um, O7, so not too bad for the Haas driver. Done a pretty good lap there, and um, I'm sure he'll be in contention for pole position any moment soon. So um, we should see those times start to tumble, and maybe the early 20 seconds are possible. Um, Dragon Pro is up there currently. Anybody else down the order? Bromson is up there, one of the guys who are in the top five in the championship. Um, Chris Becker Jones hasn't done a quality lap yet. Let's see how Chris goes through the pops of turn one. And he needed to get, get struggling a little bit with that in front of him. And he didn't break down this. Yeah, he has. Yeah, he put out that. So he ain't gonna complete that lap in the end. Uh, Ellie Revolutions, how's he doing in the Mercedes? He's on a lap. Going on with him. Not really on it either, is he? No. There are a lot of the guys. Oh, that's Jamie's gone off. There we go, just caught that. He's um, span out of what is this one? Isn't it? Yeah, he's um, he spun out there. Interesting. He's got no damage to the rear of the car. It's a bit lame. But those tyres, he might want to qualify on another set because those tyres are going to be absolutely destroyed, and this will hurt his race strategy if the race is going to be a dry one. So he might want to come in and box it in, uh, and he will do that. That's not that day currently. He's going on to that. It's quite a ball with McLaren driver who hit a bit of decent mid season form, didn't he? And then we'll be part of the first half of the season, shall I say. So, through turn one, turn two, and that breaks the 450 meter board. Down in third gear. Down in second gear for the left part. Pace from the bottom, third, now fourth. And it's very smooth from that Daz Fell, not pushing it too hard. It's now a little bit of a simple wheel to type of mid season here, but Missy gets out of his way. Very nicely, so he's helping them this first sector, Chris 7.2 in the first sector. Down to third gear, at the fourth, now into his long right hander. In third gear, very patient, very patient with the throttle. Uh, and he's got, got a pretty good exit here. Now, as we head through um, the old pit straight and uh, into old turn one. And flat from there, very nicely done by Dan's car as we head through. Maggots and Beckett's, once again, keeps it in seventh gear. Back out, down in 6th gear for the left part, and then down in 5th gear for the last part. He's just next to the steer as quick as he can. He's in the point of 2, so it's going to be a pretty good lap. The car ahead is moving the tyres up, as much as it does come off a little bit. If the car ahead is going to move on a little bit, it's Dossu. I'm sure Dossu will be okay. Really not. Does well now into the last gain, and Dossu's going to hold him up a little bit here, actually, indeed. So, he's going to compromise just a little bit on his exit. Across the line he comes, 26.8 pushing the P3, but I'm sure he might have lost a few attempts here and there um, in that last sector because he was held up by Josu slightly, but I don't think he'd be very happy with that. Uh, Mizzy, how's he doing? He's actually going to be going on to a lab. He's currently done a 26.8 as well. Very close between the two Italian teammates. Josu out there as well. Brumson uh, has he not been a 27.0. Chris not on that. We haven't seen anything from Chris yet. So let's see how Chris does. Um, Michael Figgins has got a hat on him. He needs to put in a lap pick. He's a little bit under pressure in the last seven minutes. So he wants to get one in. So he has another one to go on and improve on. Facing point two in the minutes again. It's going to be Toby Calzari. This might help out his last sector. Now, um, active beacons are going to face point five. Currently in point of hold. And, um, pretty good lap there. I haven't been to the same history, but he's actually done a superb lap there. Last came to Chris Mega Jones, let's see what's going to be. He's a good exit from this the corner, a decent one, a little bit on the couple left on the side, and across the line at 26.7, puts him into P2, so a good lap from Chris, I'm sure there's a little bit of lap time in there from Chris, so decent lap there, and puts him to P2, but look how tight it is, you know, but active beacon, uh, or Antiv beacon out there, sorry, in P1, uh, who I haven't seen at all, um, just wondering who he is. Um, Chris Becker Jones actually now Josu goes top on 26.398 so he's gone top now he's on provisional pole position so uh, times are tumbling here in the last sort of seven or so minutes the tracks rubbing in a little bit more a bit more tire grip the things have improved so he's currently on pole by two and a bit about just under two tenths and Tiff Beacon in second and it's Chris Becker Jones in third and it's tight Chris Becker Jones third fourth and fifth separated by hundreds of a second it does fall in sixth Mizzy in seventh We've got Brobson in ninth. It's very tight down there. Second one, you'll affect again. 
Now, Mizzy is on a flying lap as we stand here, actually on my personal best on the first sector. So let's see how he's getting on. He's a good exit from here. We head into the old pit straight. Run on board with the current championship leader. Not a bad um, old turn one. In eighth gear. It's all pretty smooth right now, brother. Not too diplomatic. He's a good exit here. And he's actually up against him by a tenth of a bit. So a tenth of a bit is going to boost him up by a bit. He might put him on the ball in P3 yet. Yeah. Round fifth gear. I think he's a nice little man too. Why is now baking the under 26.2? The times are tumbling. We might be. We could be on if someone is on a massive lap. We might be on the late 25 here. Here comes Big Z, 26.6, puts him into P4, so not too far away, but he's definitely come back in and put on another set of soft one tyres, and he's certainly going to go again. Anybody else, that's first in the lane. Actually, everybody's going back into the lane. TR Dutchman is out there. He's into the one, so this might be his last one session, potentially. F and Maestro in P3, it stands two. He's already done his lap. Let's go back to TR Dutchman and see how he's getting on. He's not really on it either, so he's definitely going to be going back into a bit late. Dragon Pro, how's he doing? He's through in the Magazine of Beggars section. And Flying Rosie's into the pit lane, so let's see how Dragon Pro is doing. And he's up a 10 on his lap time. So Dragon Pro is pushing for 0 to 10, so I put him in sort of P10 roughly. And he's messed up that um, right hand uh, from too wide. He's come back into the pit lane, so he's boxing in for another set of soft compound tyres. Um, but everyone in, everyone is in, and um, we've got the first one out actually, RX Racing is actually on an outlap now, and every Elite Revolution. Um, but as it stands, it's Bacon Young on pole position as it stands. A guy that I haven't seen at all this season, one of the newest guys to the league, I believe. He's doing an absolute slow job out there currently, and the, um, he's looking for so far, he's still looking for a very different top three. So Maestro's in the pit lane as well now, and his car's now bouncing around on my screen, it's going to go and continue that. So everyone's in, just to change over to a new set of top compound tyres to go for their final runs in the session. Let's see, let's go down to the bottom of the order. So we've got... Irish Grace is out there on an outlap, so let's see how he's going to do. Now turn three, please be forced to be a ball down into third gear. This is nicely. Now we will be very patient and down into second. He's the shortest of the third, and up to fourth, and up to fifth. With a decent run on this little mini straight. Steer us nicely. Now into fifth, please be forced to be a ball down into fourth gear. Put the inside nicely. Now we need to rate, be very patient with the throw here in third gear. To make some nice little height. Good exit. Now Taylor looking at the tyres, he's now in P8, but he's not going for no run here, so he's settling for that. that oh, see, I just think he's going to there, so he's not quite as flat as he'd like to be. Now he's going to back into Megan's complex. Let's see what his um, person is like. His lines make his into the three, so not too bad. Now into the right hander, breaks down into fifth gear. Do a good exit, got a decent run here. Now into the last game. There's a nail this one. He kind of dines up and get a little bit of understeer from the car. Now into the last corner. Let's see what we're going to be for Iron Chris. line at the trace of the It puts him into P13. It's pretty really tight there. Not much budget for error here in qualifying. You can see it's very really so tight. This is a track that everybody knows. Everyone knows the mistake. Most famous circuit in the world, so um, yeah, we're gonna have a bit of a top on the down for a minute. We've got Glossy out there on our laps, we've got Bat uh, Making Young on our lap, we've got Effort Mike on our lap, we've got Lindsay on our lap, we've got Tiffany on our lap, we've got uh, 
um, and to beat him on a lap. So let's see how he's got in. Mercedes. Ruth Magnus Vegas Complex once again. He did a good exit from the last part. And of course, again, now a good exit. He nailed it pretty well. Very simple for one in the middle. Should be okay, it should be a distraction. Down to the right hander, rounding up the lap. It's a good last UK. Now brakes just half the means of the second gear. You get any interest in the cars off the, the left hand side. Let's see what's gonna be for Antu and Vico. He got the line at 26 and he didn't improve. It was half a tenth down in the end, so he's not improved. He might have he won't be going for it, he won't be going again. That's his qualifying getting dusted. Um, Jamie currently out there, he actually did improve uh, to a 26.3. He's currently in second place. Josu is out there currently. He's just completing his first sector and he's in the second sector right now. And therefore, Maestro is in the first sector too. He's actually going to be up soon. So let's have a look at Josu. How is he going? How is he doing on the second? Through um, Pops in seventh gear. And just picking up the ties. That's a good one. It's five from the top four. And mid the end for Pega Jones. And he does fail. Now in the last part of Magnus Vegas Complex, is it a good exit from Josu? It's going to be an alright one, a 26.2 in the sector, so that might not be enough to improve. He's in a good last section here. Let's see if he can actually improve in any of his positions. Can he get into the pole position? He needs to find another tenth of a second at least. Now into the last um, couple of corners now. Down into third gear. It's a good exit from the middle corner as he leads you on to the last corner. Flat into the last corner, is it going to be enough to go top? It isn't, it's totally pretty free, so the weight doesn't improve slightly. Edwin Meister is last line up as well, Pizzi is out there in the last corner, and so is Chris, is Chris going to improve here for well, our fight? Across the line, the trace is point three, and it is second place, but what about Pizzi? Pizzi doesn't improve his point three, but Edwin Meister, how's he doing? Into the last chicane we go. Apparently Blakey Gun is safe on pole, and Edwin Meister got two else extra in the track across the line it's not enough 27.2 and he crashes out of qualifying and Bacon Yum has retired so that means we've got a debutant on pole here at Britain and we'll go through the provisional grid order very shortly So there you go, Bacon Yum 007 is on pole position for the British Grand Prix. In the Toro Rosso, the debutant Chris Becker Jones in second place, Mizzy in third, very tight between the top four actually, indeed attempts of rating the top four, even top five actually, Jimmy in fourth, Joshua in fifth, Evan Maestro in sixth, Antiv Beacon in seventh, Mighty Dillon in eighth, Dazful in ninth, Ted Jackson in tenth, Thomas in eleventh, Brumson in twelfth, thirteen for Dragon Pro, fourteen for Flying Rosie, fifteen for RH Racing, sixteen for Ellie Revolutions, Alabama in seventeenth, and Pelzeri in eighteenth. Run out, run off the grid. So we're going into the race now. Let's see if it's gonna be a drier one. I hope it's a dry race because generally overtaking and racing here is quite fun to watch. Um, shout out to all you guys watching the stream. Sixteen of you. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. If you want to leave any questions in the in the chat, I've got the chat open so I can see any comments. So if you guys want to comment on anything and got anything to ask, we'll have uh, top three podiums at the end of the race as well. So any questions you have for the top three, we'll be able to answer at the end of the stream when we finish the race. And I will notify you guys that um, at the end after the done. But yeah, it looks to be a dry start for here for in Britain. So we'll see how things go. So here we go for round 10 of Isla Tier 2 Season 4. Here we go, guys. For the start of the British Grand Prix, could we have a different winner this season? It looks likely it could be our ninth different winner out of 10 races, and seemingly we're not going to go in any time soon. If everyone's ready up, are we uh, getting on with it? I yeah, apologize for the little bit of a delay. I don't know if this. Game broke. Happens looking at the chat that we've got on Twitter. We're stuck on the grid apparently. Okay, so we've got an issue. Yeah, we've got an issue. But basically, what I'm seeing, guys, I do apologize 
apologize to all you guys watching the stream, but looks like the game has um has uh <laughs> has ended itself, seemingly. And um Everyone's stuck on the grid, so it means we can't actually get the game going. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna have to restart this, aren't we? How are we gonna do this? Are we gonna have to do as a, a new qualifying session or do a one shot quality? Because we've got the grid order. I'm guessing, actually, I think on this game you can actually rearrange the grid order yourself. And so I think we can do that. Yeah, everyone's stuck on the grid, so we're gonna have to restart here. I do apologize to everybody watching the stream. Bear with it, it makes him fix itself. Free start, nah. Okay, so everyone in the top 10 will have to start on the soft compound tyres. Um, so we are we are restarting this session. Uh, if not, it's a disqualification. That's fine. I do apologise, guys. To all you guys who are watching the stream and being patient, just bear with me. Bear with us whilst we trot this out. I think we are restarting the lobby, indeed. Yeah, Dragon Pro's left. I think everyone's leaving it, so we're gonna have to restart. What I'll do is the stream will go and pause briefly whilst um. Yeah, we can't even pause the game either. Look, I'm trying to even to. Yeah, everyone's leaving. So let's 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 do this. And I think we're back. I think we are back. Yeah, we're back. Okay, we're just restarting the lobby, lads. We're gonna get back into the race again. But that's really unfortunate because I was running out. I was trying to get the the um of the hype going, but unfortunately, we have to wait for a new lobby to be set up. Funny enough, as long as, when we actually um left, everything started working again. But I'm. I've got a suspicion that maybe. Can we look at the stream for the results? Good question. I don't know if I can actually do that. Bear with me a second. Actually, we've got the results there. People have actually taken photos. Fine then. As long as I don't have to stop the stream and restart the stream again, I'm happy just to keep it as it is. Yeah, so I do apologize for the delay, guys. We're we're going into the session now, so let's hope we can get the race got um, up. Right then, let's play. Yeah, 
Yeah, this can be setting up the the grid order via the qualifying results. People have got the pictures in in the pits chat, so we'll be able to organize the grid order, and then we'll be able to go from there and get the race going. I'm hoping it'll be a dry start like it was. I'm assuming that the weather conditions will be dry because I'm sure I'm sure that they'll be able to see that it was dry to start with. Um, I think we'll have to start on the um, on the tyres they qualified on. Unfortunately, top ten will be starting on the soft compounds um and the rest um on whatever they want basically so that's the all that's basically the ruling here we're just waiting for the start twin to see viewers hello everyone hello everyone who's new to the stream I hope you guys are enjoying it oh can't enjoy it yet until we actually get into the race but anyway thank you for, for uh, joining if you want to subscribe to or oh, follow me on twitch just press the follow button and if you've got any questions leave them in the chat i got the chat open so i'll be able to answer any questions you'd like to do like to have uh, like to have and answer i'll be able to answer them for you hopefully any moment now we'll be able to get the, the session underway Just waiting for everybody to join. I think we've got a few more people we're waiting on, and then we got to get the the race finally underway. So, but anyway, any of you guys who want to go and you know, watching the stream, just go and drag a. I say just go and um, get a drink. You know what I mean? <laughs> get a drink if you're uh, watching and just watching for the uh, for the entertainment. Just go and get a drink. I'd say. Waiting for a few more people, and then we able to get the race underway. Um, should be that be able to position everybody in the in the grid order in the lobby, and then be able to get the. Get it just in the way as normal, but um, qualifying was very tight though. Show it again, qualifying top five separated by separated by a tenth of a second. It shows how pretty close this grid again, and once again, how close this grid is. Um, very competitive indeed. So, um, very tough um in qualifying, and um, I expect. I mean, we could have you know top five even more than even more than that. We could have eight people going for the race race win. Yeah, you never know. So. We had a debutant on pole position, didn't we? We had uh, the Torosso of uh, of uh, the the bacon yum. You did a solid job in qualifying there. Um, didn't didn't expect that. I've not been given any warning to say that he's very fast, but uh, he's proved his pace very early and he stepped his authority on the season. Um, it's basically his first race of the season. It's gonna be overcast, is it? Also, be a dry race. Dry race. So it's gonna be a dry race. As he said. They're sorting out the grid order. So Mizzy is looking into the, getting the grid order sorted now. Must be a lot of stress for him because he's actually the host. So I do feel he races. He's got the championship lead, and he's got sort of all the lobby out and everything like that. So this is the worst case scenario for him. So yeah, it's been confirmed that you can sort the grid order via um, the qual off but via the lobby, so we can do it in the lobby and sort it out. So put everybody in their designated positions. Irish racing, well, that was a new experience. If you're watching the stream, what's actually happened to me? <laughs> Hopefully, we're going soon. We're just waiting for the grid all to be done and then we'll be able to get in the way. Uh, so, I do apologize to everybody watching the stream, the delay we're having. We are going to get this going. And hopefully we have a cracker, a cracker of a race, sort of pay it back. You know what I mean? Um, pay back, uh, yeah, the guy. You guys were waiting so patiently, and we'll be able to get the get things in the way.
see what's going on with the things go yeah we're just still waiting for uh the grid order to be sorted out and then finally we'll be uh getting this underway So we definitely this is the maximum so we've got everybody in the lobby we're just waiting for everything to be set up and so Right, so Minzy, I think let's go and hopefully we don't get this again. So uh, we are going. Now we're getting in the way. So everyone's ready up. And now the session is counting down. And we'll be able to go into the race finally. Qualifying has been done. And everyone's in their designated positions, hopefully. So hopefully this will work. And then we can give you the race. There we go. Now going into it. So let's hope the game doesn't break itself again. These things happen, don't they? Really, these things happen. And uh, as long as there's a workaround and we can all coordinate, look, look, the communication is good within the chat, so obviously that means that we can get things getting, you can get things on the way faster. But yeah, thank you to, to everybody who's watching the stream. Yeah, thank you for being so patient. And uh, I know it's been a bit a lot of a long sort of 10, 15 minutes, but uh, we're finally going to be able to get this show underway. No burnout, mate. I didn't know you were coming next week. I've not been told anything. Right. Hopefully, everyone's going to be going to be able to ready up. But burnout, mate. If you're okay coming next week, I'm not here because I've got my twelve eight shift. That's something I need to actually discuss with um somebody else. I'm actually not here. I actually, I've got my twelve eight shift. So I won't be able to commentate next week, so you won't be able to come, you won't be okay coming with me <clears throat> if you are. Anyway, here we go. I think we're going to be able to get into it finally. Here we go, I, I think this is actually going to look good, it's looking okay, hopefully. Oh, they've gone already, okay. So I'm going to the start, but it's So, who's where? Bakingham is leading the race, cars are off already. Um, Bakingham is leading the race currently, it's a good place to use jokes. Mizzy is in first, the top three stays the same as it was, Jamie in fourth, Meister in fifth. Let's go to the top leader, let's see how things go. Mizzy behind Chris, let's see if he's going to move, then he won't, he'll back, he'll stay behind. Um, Thomas has actually retired out of the session already, so finally, uh, do, we have to start, that's the way it is. Now Jamie looks for his opportunity on the inside of oh, Mizzy, he's looking for a move, he's in the sixth stream. Let's see if Jamie can get this move done. We're going on board with the half driver, who's been on an absolute man on the whole thing recently. Goes for flat out turn one. Right section. And, oh, okay. He's hit Mitzi there. Mitzi just cut the session here. Yeah, Mitzi's actually, I think he's slowed down because he's now getting part of Maestro. He didn't talk about the puppet. Everybody might break close. Mitzi has left the session. So he's gone. He lagged out. <laughs> Look at him. That's like three or four wide. He's just gone. Um, and now it's just getting into fourth place. And Maestro into third. So Mitzi, his championship, championship leader, has lagged out the session. He's down into P9, connect. I don't think he has been able to, so he's going to have to get back in as soon as possible. But we've got two of them battling, we've got Anthony Beacon battling with Jossie. Jossie from the inside, going forward with this battle here. Jossie from the inside, got um, Anthony Beacon this place off the circuit. He's getting passed by the Haas and everybody indeed. And it's all battle, it's all happening here in the Silver 
up for selection. Florian Rossi um, is in seventh place, but now Andrew Peek on the inside for Otakin. Um, Andrew Peek is keeping the inside, but Crosby running from the outside as Will Dunn. Let's go back to the inter top. We've got Josu and Pelzeri battling Ray Josu on the inside, and he's got that move done, I believe. Has he? I think he's just like, that move done. He hasn't that move done. What I want to know is. Where is Jamie? He's actually in the pit lane. Jamie was running in fourth, but he's now in the pits. I think he got damaged by Midzi. Midzi has lagged out, obviously. It lagged to the point where, unfortunately, just completely congested. That's what it is. Now, Midzi has rejoined the session. How's the leaders going here? So, quite a big gap. 1.2 seconds in second break. It's great. Chris and the Bacon Yum. Maestro in the third place. We've got Josu back in fourth. Desperate in fifth, so let's see. Desperate closing up, but he's not just enough. He's got to be waiting for DRS though, which is obviously going to be a thing in um, lap three. Rossi actually has got some fantastic pace in sixth. He's normally down the order, and he's actually doing a pretty good job there. Um, Anti Beacon down in seventh place. Any of the battles is quite spread out below the, um, down below here. Um, so nothing much happening, but pretty tight up the top. We've got Dutch ball with Josu. Let's see if um, Dutchman gets DRS on Josu next time around. So look at that, Rossi is really looking aggressive at this stage of the race. He's all over the back of Dutchman as well, so you know, Rossi might have a good chance on Dutchman. Let's see how this all pans out here. So um, Rossi is going to have the DRS at the Vez, and so will um, Dutchman on Josu. And they're closing up, but it's got quite a short straight this one, so it's not going to be a good opportunity to be able to get past. So let's wait for the next one after the uh, Magnus Beggars Complex. Right now everyone's sort of sling into their groove, but uh, already people have had to make stops. Let's do the stops. So Jamie, Bivin, Dazfell and Mike Dillon, they've all made stops so far. It's also quite early in this race, they've got to begin at least. Eight of everything is Maestro and Joshua as well. Maestro is 4.6 behind. Chris here, so he's just quite low lap time in the early stages. I wonder if I'm wondering if Marshall has some sort of damage to his car. So Rosy is chasing after Dutchman. Again in the DRS zone. Dutchman's dropped behind by over a second behind Josu. Now into Lush Kane. And look at that Josu right on Marshall's tail here as well. Let's go back, let's get to that battle here. Let's go on board. Way of Josu, he's very quick in the race in comparison to Maestro. Maestro's struggling seemingly. So Josu is going to be running in the move probably in the next, um, next DRS zone. We had a good exit from this next corner. Making an next thing. He's going to look at the inside of the He's going to wait for the DRS surely. So let's see if he gets a good exit here. Um, cuts back in. He needs a good run. He's had the slipstream and the DRS and the ERS to him as well. He needs to have him surely. Have him. No, he's a bit too far behind. Uh, he would have been making it here. Just too short of a straight, this one. You now, Rosie is actually two and a bit tense behind um, uh, Dutchman. So, Joyce is getting a good exit here. Let's see if he's got a decent enough run to overtake him to old turn one. And he surely hasn't got enough to wait for the next DRS. So, he's a good exit. And he's a focus on Maggot and Beckett. He's got a good run actually through. Um, the fast left of the fast right hander. Uh, so he's got to wait for the exit of uh, Magnus Beckett. And Josu needs a good exit here. Goes back in. And his DRS in the slip screen. He's got to be his best chance to get past Maestro here. Goes to the left hand side surely. And they're going to be wheel to wheel going into this section. Round the outside. Going to make this one stick. And Josu make this one stick. He's looking on the outside. He's got that move done. But will um, Maestro be the fight back? Maestro is going to look to the Inside, he won't, and that is the move done for Josh. Josh is now into P3, and he can be chasing after Christopher Jones. But behind Dutchman is behind uh, Maestro. We've got Rossi as well, again, fantastic, fantastic form. Look how tight this is, so close between these guys, indeed. Rossi looking for a good move. He's gonna go on the inside, he's gonna go for it on the inside, but he can't make it stick, so he's gonna wait for his opportunity after this point. He needs a good cutback. And I don't think he's got it, he's 16 back now, so he's going to be a bit of a Dutchman uh, by Maestro, but again, a bit, of, a bit of a gap really. These four, all in this with the In the background, I've got Calzari back in the way with Antibeacon. See, oh, he's actually gone, he's crashed out, he's gone. So 
So he does his bad off into the wall. He's, I saw him go wide. So he's gone into the wall and he's crashed down. So that's him out of the race completely. So that's really unfortunate for that guy who's been on a he's been decent recently as well. Been very unlucky though. Dutchman is running the move on his teammates, surely. Three magnets and mess as we know. In these cars, it's an amazing experience. It's a little bit understeery. Not the next thing, he's a good exit here. Meister is very wide, and this is got to be an opportunity. He's going to have a very easy to the left hand side he goes, and he's got that move done and dusted, surely. And he's to the inside of his no, he doesn't need to. So, Dutchman into P4. Meister is suddenly struggling at this stage. Rosie is looking fantastically good at this point. He's going forward with him. Let's see, no, he'll wait for the next opportunity to see. Maestro seemingly struggling. I wonder if he can sort of damage the early lap because he didn't see the start of the race. He's going to cut. No, he didn't. He's going to restart and he'll see that point. He might have got some damage early on. So, Rosie looking very quickly to turn one in comparison to Maestro. Look at the inside. Is he going to make this one stick? He breaks very late. He's on the inside. And as Maestro is in that move, he, I think he might have, but he's going to go to the back of the inside once again. So, they're going to go wheel to wheel. Before the DRS zone is Maestro going to have the DRS and then he will have the DRS. Was he on the right? Both of them have the DRS each other actually in back. Let's see how Was he's going. The wheel to wheel going through here. Was he's on the right hand side. Dutchman's wide. They're going to be three wide maybe if uh, Dutchman's played it right. He won't. Now Was he's going to go around the outside of Maestro. Is he going to make this one stick? He's going to carry on through the old pitch straight. Rosie's on the right hand left hand side here. Let's see if he can get the move done. He can't. He cut back on Maestro. And he's got so much more momentum than Maestro. And Rosie gets past him into P4. And that's a great move from the Williams driver as we head through the Magnus bigger section again. And the Dutch is going to try and pass his own teammate, but his team has a good exit, but he's again very wide. Seemingly Maestro is struggling here in the early stages. Dutchman in the system and he's got the ERS to the left hand side. Was he going to have anything? But it shouldn't be a problem. And Dutchman gets past Maestro once again into P5. So it is current order. Bet in, the, in, the, in P1. Back back to in P2. Four seconds back. P3 for Josu. P4 for Flying Rosy. P5 for Dutchman. Followed by Maestro in P6. He's got problems. Mizzy in P7 once again. So Mizzy, after he lagged out, he's currently in the points. He hasn't made a stop yet, but he's still in the points. So it's still looking okay for the McLaren driver. Um, in the first challenge in the championship is Jamie, and Jamie is all the way down in P13. But remember, Jimmy has pitted, but may have to pit again, and probably certainly will have to pit again because he won't be making 23 laps on the set of medium compound tasks at the end, I'm sure of it. Mezzi out there in P7, current championship leader. Vlozzi is right again, being passed actually. He's made a mistake here, being passed once again by Maestro and Dutchman, so he didn't see all that work again. Let's see if he can make this mistake at once again. He's got to go for this, and surely he's really pushes really hard. He's actually doing a fantastic job with Vlozzi so far. He's, uh, he's not been on form recently, but he's come alive in this race. He's really enjoying Silverstone, and maybe this is a circuit that he knows very well, and. He's absolutely enjoying his time here in the Williams. He's got a decent exit through Old Town 1, but he's not, on, he's not close enough to make any sort of move. And uh, Maestro, again, he's going to be vulnerable here out of the exit. And he's probably going to a good exit, and Maestro's wide. Here he goes. Here's the ERS and the DRS at the same time. Is it enough to get past Maestro here? He's closing, closing, closing. Both Dutchman and Maestro and DRS and Dutchman as well. And Rosie brings as late as he can, but he's going around the outside. He's going to track extend to Galore, and he got that move done. And Maestro is in the middle, I think he is. So I know he's going to see his speeding penalty, so he's obviously got a mistake. He's actually so not a good death for Maestro, but I reckon he's got some draw front end plate damage. That's why he's struggling through the high speed goals in particular. Let's see where he comes out in comparison. Is it going to be a new front wing? It is a new front wing, so yeah, definitely understeer, I can tell from the Let's see where he's going to put them. He's going to be pretty far down the order. He'll be able to do, I think he might be able to do one stop there on the medium. He's going to be held a little bit. He's away, so he's finally away. Let's see where he is in comparison. Is he going to be with Jamie? Jamie is on the hard. Yeah, that's a smooth tyre. It's not a nice tyre on this game at all. Maestro is going to come out though. I think the head of Jamie here, he will do indeed. So Maestro in front of Jamie in P12. So he's the first of the guys who have already stopped. And I do believe on those mediums, Maestro will be able to go to the end of the race. How is Brompton doing behind Antif Beacon? 
Uh, so he's not far behind, he's only um, three and a bit tenths behind. And again, Brozzi's face climb Dutchman, but he's been watching that battle for quite a long time. That's fucking a bit of a penalty. Let's have a look on board with Robinson Big and it can exit from um, old turn one, but won't be close enough on that character to take the opportunity down the exit of um, from the exit of Magnus and Beckett. It's a good exit here, actually yeah, has been struggling here, so it's gonna be a done deal surely for Robinson. He gets into P7 and a pretty good move from the Ferrari driver now and he continues to move away on the pursuit to Mizzy. Now Ari's racing is he's in a good race here, he's currently in P8. He's flying in the P2. So Dutchman's in the pit lane now, well he's now been released um, into P4. So Midsey now is going to be in front of um, Dutchman. It's all pretty separated from the top four, you know. 5.8 seconds separating Bacon and Chris. Um, Josu in third. And he's going to be second back, so he's going to be second back from Chris. He's going to try and climb and close the gap up a little bit if he can. Was he down in sixth behind there? Midsey is behind him. Brumson is behind him as well. 1.2 seconds separating Beacon and Brumson. Now, Irish Racing is all over the back. We've now got the far, um, the travel of Dragon Throw. Um, as well, Racing is going to the inside, is he? Oh, they're not going to go three away, surely not. It's going to be a mess. And they somehow make it through all the way. Dragon Throw on the outside of Andrew Beacon. Now, Irish Racing is going to be, actually, look at that on the ground where he goes. Dragon Bo, Dragon Bo, Dragon Pro, he's lost all that, all that momentum he had. Irish Racing is going to go on the outside of the Mercedes. Is he going to make this one stick? Can he make this one stick? He can make it stick. And he is now in the King of Service. Irish Racing into seventh place. And now Dragon Poe gets past Andy Beacon. And Andy Beacon is definitely struggling here. Decent qualifying pace, but he's definitely struggling with those tyres. I don't know if he's got some sort of damage for his front end play or something, but he's definitely slow here. Not looking good. Dragon Poe, though, is now battling Irish Racing. And they go real to will here. And Dragon Poe gets the move done into B7. So Irish Racing's B7. He's in having too long, but Irish Racing come back at him. He's going to go to the inside. He's going to go to the inside. Surely he's going to get his move done. And no, Dragon Paul trying to hold him up a big time. And uh, he's holding his just about. Wow. Robson, oh, uh, I think he's not getting in well. And the beat is in the lane as well. Irish Racing is struggling for a grip for turn one. So it's all pretty spread out here. Let's keep with these two. So 16 more laps to go in this race, it's all pretty settled down here. Dazfell is behind Mighty Dillon by 5 tenths. That's something to watch out for, that's to the battle for, for uh, 15th place. Helzeri and Pompus are both retired from the set from the race. Uh, but the majority of the grid, I mean half the grid have already pitted. Bacon yeah, can, can kind of continue, he's in a really world of his own right now, so he can kind of go as long as he wants to. He's got that opportunity, he's looking very good for a win here. But again, nothing really close. As does feel down 15th place. It's got obviously Andrew Beacon's pitted. It's all pre separated. There's nothing really going on in this race. Everyone's kind of in their own race. Um, obviously, once everyone else pits, then we'll be basically settled in, I think. Um, however, people like um, Jamie, Jimmy Fox will be pitted um, very early on. They're probably pit again. So I'm sure we might see a few more stops even towards the end of the race from the, soft, from the softest compound you can go for. Right now. But now uh, Mizzy is into the pit lane. Robinson continues for another lap. Uh, but once again, Bacon Yum, our race leader, uh, set for another for, for first win of the season, his debut in this right in his league. He's been set for a victory here at Silverstone. So um, be nine race winners out of ten races for us in this tier, which is absolutely incredible. It's very again, it shows that every single week we don't know who's going to be on, you know, who's going to be in form, who's going to be on top, and. Um, the first half of the season has been absolutely crazy with the amount of different winners we've had and how competitive this grid is. Again, it, it makes it fantastic. I think it's actually one of the best uh, leagues I've actually commentated on because it's just so competitive. You just don't know what to expect. And um, I hope for more of the same going into the second half of the season. Anyway, down the order, Bibin and Racing are back in the way, I think. Well, actually, Bridering is actually pitted. But again, very separate. Not much going on here. So you've got... Um, I think we've got Racing's and Antiv Beacon battling away now, so let's go on board with this one. Actually, we've got Ellie Revolutions and Chris battling away, have we? Or uh, has Chris got past Ellie Revolutions? I think he might have done, so that's done, I think. 
Chris has already pitted as, as you know, so he's currently, he was in second place, so he's done his stuff, I don't think he's going to win again, surely not, so Chris is looking good for our podium here at Silverstone. And if Bacon makes a mistake, it's going to be on for a, it could be on course for a win here, so Chris is uh, putting himself in a very good position. So Josu now pits, let's see where he comes out in comparison to Chris. So Chris is coming around the final of the corners here. And I think he might have him. I'm sure he play will. Yeah, he's going to have him surely, yeah. So Chris is going to be um, back into the position he was in. So Chris has actually now jumped Josu. But Josu is going to have the younger tyres, remember, by a couple laps. So Josu is wanting to watch towards the end of the race. He might be able to get into second place, you never know. And Josu has actually had some pretty good, pretty good form recently as well. He's another one who's a pretty decent form. Um, Bacon continues on, so I wonder when he's picking. He's, he's got the pace, he's looked after his tyres, he's under no sort of pressure either. He's just like this teammate as well. Um, he's done a solid job out there. He's um, yeah, Debbie Tim's done a fantastic job. Let's see if he pits now. He has to the three, let's see if he pits in. And he does pit in. So the race is the pits in, um, and he sits it down on the marks. So Are they okay? Yes, he does. So pretty good. So here he comes, very slow pit lane here in Silverstone, very slow indeed, there's now anti beacon gets a fight for his time penalty for tight track limits basically, and Bacon's away, and there's a pretty sick start from the Toronto boys, and I'm sure that'll be his last of the day, he won't be planning on making another one, and those mediums are going to easily make it 13 laps, and those soft cars made 13 or 15 laps, so he's going to be good for the rest of the race. Brumson, though, will take the lead of the race briefly. He's going longer, so he's on the medium, so he's in the um, different... Actually, has he already pitted? No, he hasn't, so he's actually in the different strategy. He's gone on the mediums first, he's now Chris in the first of the race. Now behind, we've got Dragon Pro battling away with um, Bacon. So Bacon will try to get past Dragon Pro as soon as, as soon as he can. They need to clear him. Um, Chris, actually, you know what, he's just done a really good job there, he's just closed the gap up a little bit. It was a bit bigger than that, so um, it was about 7 seconds before um, Chris pitted, so Chris has got a, quite a big undercut on Bacon, but the difference is Bacon's going to have fresh tyres, so I don't think Bacon's going to be too concerned, but uh, we'll see Chris probably close the gap up a little bit, um, because obviously his tyres are warmed up, and in comparison, Bacon ha Bacon's tyres hasn't, haven't actually warmed up. So he's doing a solid job. Bacon again within a sort of a second, a second over behind Dragon. Dragon can't seem to get, Bacon can't seem to get back um, against Dragon. So right, that's Dan. You know, Bacon needs to kind of get on with it because if he gets into some traffic, Chris will be right there um, waiting to pick him off. Let's see how this all unfolds. So this seems that Bacon's taking a long time to get in with those uh, mediums again. Um, Dragon Pro is saying again the strategy from Dragon Pro and Brumson, they're both on the same sort of strategy, the medium fast and then go on the top of the past at the end of the race. They're going to try and stretch the medium as far as they can go. I'm just giving a good indication that the medium can do quite a long distance around here, so anyone who's going for medium is going to go to the end really. Baker's going to be trying to get a move done. He's 2.6 in front of Chris, let's see what sort of he's going to get. Again, at this stage, he's still trying to fill in those mediums. So it won't be quite there yet. So Bacon is a good exit here, which he has got. Again, he's got half a back, so again, he won't be able to make any, any moves yet. He hasn't got himself up. He needs to focus on getting a good exit from Bacon to Bacon. Turn one, the old turn one is fantastic, he's got a good exit there, so he's looking very strong. Through Maggie's and Beckett's we go, he's closing up big time on the Salva, so the Salva's definitely stroking the stage now. Bacon is a good exit here, he's got an alright run, let's see, the ERS and the ERS, is it enough to get past Beckett to go here? He's closing up quite quickly, let's get to the inside he goes, and sure, that's a done deal, it is. The Dragon is now, Bacon is now into P2, and he changes up to Brumson, Brumson continues out for another lap. Dragon Pro fight back? No, he doesn't. So he's behind him for now. 
Um, again, everyone's sort of in their own race, you know, quite a big, quite a big gap between each other. We've got Anthony Beacon, who's about, he's about four bit tenths behind um, Irish Racing. So that might be the one to watch. Dragon Pro is still with um, Bacon. Let's see if that unfolds again. And now Anthony Beacon is actually now retired from the race, so he was actually catching Irish Racing, but now he's out, so I've almost, um, almost uh, jinxed him. He's gone. But uh, once again. Chris 2.5 behind Dragon Pro. He needs a clear Dragon Pro too, but yeah, now Chris is three and a half seconds back from Bacon. So Bacon almost has that pace. He has that uh, pace to beat Chris today. So any hope that Chris has, he might need to hope that Bacon starts extending and doing all those things again. The county But Bacon again, eight seconds behind um, Bromson. Bromson might might, might want to be looking in his rearview mirror because. Bacon has come on very quickly indeed. So Brumson, I would say, needs a pit probably, and he'll be in the pit once that's stopped and good to the end. Different strategy, but he's going to be a fast compound. It's three tens now, his tyres are gone, so it's going to be easy meat for Bacon. DRS and ERS once again, and it's going to be a done deal for the Tolstoy, surely. Around the outside, Brumson's going to make it easy for him. They're going to have a will to will with each other. And oh, they get really fast with each other, and Brumson continues out for another lap. And he stays in front, does he? He does, and Bacon puts Christie on the inside, so the big fight here for the leader of the race is not for the net lead, because Bacon's got the net lead, but Brumson's fighting him pretty hard, and Bacon can be a little bit involved in this. Meanwhile, if, you know, Brumson, I think Brumson's probably have any great teammate out there. Chris is in third, he's 3.7 seconds back. You probably find Brumson can try and out Chris here, because Chris is obviously in third place in the championship, he's 32 points behind. He's, you know, he's lost Rob, I think he's got a bit behind him, sorry. Uh, he lost a little momentum in the championship in comparison to Midzi. I think Bacon, uh, I think Bacon can be told to uh, hold Midzi up, uh, hold Bacon up as he can. And uh, you see Bacon's got the advantage of tyres, but Brumson's going to defend as hard as he can before he picks. So Chris has any chance to uh, get within sort of three seconds of him. Now what Brumson will be able to do is crowd Bacon a little bit. Psychology, psychology in racing is big, so you never know, but once it's done in the media, I don't think it's been worth it really, it's not the easy one. The three magazines are making it once again. There's ten more laps to go in this race, still a lot to watch, but again, it's uh, everyone's kind of settled into their own race, nothing's really happening, apart from this little battle here. Bacon gets a good run here, it's surely going to be a move done, and Bromson defends, and they're still going well to with each other, and yeah, Bromson is so really not worth the fight and Brompton surely will be in the pit lane and he does dive in so Brompton's in the pit lane and he'll just over to the soft compounds and while we were out Chris is within 3.7 seconds of um, the of, um, the bacon yeah. again everything is all pretty good out here Dragon Pro is a bit behind mid -Z, 9 tenths now so Dragon Pro might be able to make something of mid this mid has been on yeah, sort of 8 tenths maybe now mid seat done, Brooks done the order so he's in the pit lane. Let's see where he's come out in comparison. So let's see. He's going the pit exit now. We I mean, tight between these two I think, actually for um, Brumson. Maybe not, maybe be in front. I think he's gonna be in front of these two actually. Yeah, I think he is gonna be in front just about. Is he? He's just about, I think. Can he defend? Now mid is around the outside of um, Brumson on the inside, but remember Brumson will get the cut back and he's on, actually no he won't, he has a superior grip in comparison. Now here he goes, he's going to have the DRS, is he? No, it'll be Mizzy the DRS instead. So here we go, down the straight, Mizzy surely has to defend. He won't defend, because around the outside, there's contact between all three of them and mid brumson has gone round and there's a crash and damage to the front wing of, of Mizzy and Mizzy has retired from the race. I uh, don't know what's happened there, but I believe they went three wide, and I believe Dragon Pro might have had contact with, um, with Robson. And that has said, obviously, in the end, they were busy on the outside, and he was the wonderful victim and all that. And he's out of his race, and I'm sure I can get a big call to him that Dragon Pro here in this uh, championship because the, our championship leader is out of the British Grand Prix. Meanwhile, his, you know, his nearest hand is, but. Jamie is certainly playing for the club to the world, close their gap up, 
and Chris can end the bit with the point 18 points as well. So that championship lead is going to really slim down big time um, in the top three after the three missing out. So that's big time drama for him. Um, let's look at the gaps. Jossie is 1.1 behind Chris and it's pretty close there. Three times behind between Boxman and Maestro. Let's see what this is the best bet. DRS where for Maestro. Eight more laps to go in this race. Got four wins and got five. And then, look at that, he closed big time. He's big time in the bank. Right There's a good exit here. Is he going to get the launch he wants? He's got. Oh, he's a little bit on the gravel there. Not a good exit from, from um, James. The Maestro is definitely going to be lining a move up on his own teammate. He needs a good exit from Maggots and Beckett. Jossie within a second of um, Chris now, so there's a battle for, again, I said earlier, you know, I predicted that there'd be a battle on going on for second place. So let's see what um, Maestro can do here in comparison to his teammate. Can he go to the inside? No, he can't. He, he has to close up quite a bit. I want to get to speak English, just like just gibberish. Once again, nothing as of yet, so Maestro can try and put as much pressure on that these two have quite similar pace. Um, Maestro again closing the turn turn one and look at that, look at the closing he's got. He literally really dares look at the inside, he goes for it, you know, he's looking at the inside, he's pretty low there, but again, it's too early. He can sweep back, he can cut back on that. And he's done it, but it's not a great exit, so really it's not a good opportunity. He's within four tenths, but has he got enough closing speed, enough ERS to close up? I don't think he has. No, he hasn't. We can wait again for the next DRS so to make any sort of move. Once again, Joshua eight tenths behind Chris, so that's definitely one to watch. But these two are the closest battle on the circuit and it's down to two Force Indians. Maestro again needs to look in behind him. I mean, Rosie is in a fantastic job. Flying Rosie, you know what? He might be my job of the day. He's in a superb job out there. I don't know what position change. He's done um, what? He made the most positions here today. Five positions for Dragon Pro. Actually, no, eight positions for Rosie, actually. Yeah, so great. let's think Rosie will not be my driver today. We can continue this home. Once again, Maestro really close. The Dutchman, again, just can't make anything of it. He's going to have to stick behind him again. Um, again, looking at the battle for second place. Seven tens are breaking Josu and Chris. Let's keep with Maestro for at least two for another lap, and if there's nothing happening, then we'll probably move on to Josu and Chris. Once again, you know, big time for turn one. Maestro is up a lot on his own teammate. Does he dare to have a look? Uh, no, he's going to wait for the DRS. He needs to concentrate on getting a good exit here. Uh, he's kind of swoop back in, I think. He's going to swoop it back in. You know what? He's closer than he was before. He's within two, he's within two turns here, so this surely should be it. Let's go on board with it. He's closing a little bit. Here he goes to the inside, surely. Is he going to stick? He goes to the inside. And they're still growing real to look these two. And I think Mike has got that move done. But does Dutchman back out of it? We might get a better exit through um, the old pit straight. And he has got a decent run. Keep with these two for um, the rest of this lap because the next DRS is coming up. The Magnus of Beckett's once again, and uh, Maestro's looking a little bit vulnerable still. But I think Dutchman's dropping back a bit. Uh, but he will have DRS with Dutchman, so let's see how this pairs. He's going to with him, but I don't think he's close enough. Or is he? No, he's not close enough. So that is surely it, done and dusted for um, F Maestro. And now Dutchman's very wide. Limit, so you should be careful you don't do too much of that because he will be you know, that is track limits and once uh, again this is staying right behind uh, Maestro Maestro gets a good exit through the top of the corner and he leads him around but Josu is really close to Chris now so let's go on board with these two this is about for second place here in this race Bacon's been an absolute just just mind he's been in an absolute race of his own this race but Josu looking for a move on Chris now now has he got enough momentum on Chris He's in the slipstream and the DRS and the ERS, but he's too far back to so wait um, for the next DRS zone. So let's keep with these two, this lovely helicopter camera that everyone loves and goes on about. 
Um, it's a beautiful camera shot. A bit of a, a, bit of a overstep from Josu. Oh, within half a second of Chris. And now he's closing a big time through Old Term. And we go once again. Five more laps to go in the British Grand Prix. But ILR season, ILR Tour 2 season 4. Maggots and Beckett once again. Dragon Prigger's three, three, three second time penalty. Now, so now let's see if Josh can get a good exit here. Let's go and pull with him. He's a bit far back for my liking. He might have to mention that he's going to be in the year after the DRS. But no, he's not turning up enough. It's not enough to turn up on Chris. And once again, Chris is defending with all his life out of the second place here. It's good as a good haul of points. The more points he can still away from Missy, the better. Again, not a great exit for, um, for Josu, and uh, he's in five tips with Chris, and he's finding it pretty difficult to get past him. And once again, you know, fourth and fifth place, boys, they're battling away as well. They're within half a second still, so they're, them two are battling away as hard as they can. Josu needs a good exit once again, and he's again, within half a second, so it's again not enough, really. Or is it enough? He's closing quite quickly on Chris, which is going to defend to the inside. Cross him on the outside, and Chris parks it nicely. What a great defense from Chris. But now, Josh is going to try and cut back on Chris and get the better exit down the old pit straight going into Cops. Let's see if he's got that done. So, Josh is within half of the So, he's going to the left hand side. Is he going to go around the outside like Chris Becker doing here? He goes around the outside. They're still going real to wheel as we go to the back of once again. And it's going to be Josu on the inside, and it's going to be tight. And Chris on the inside, Chris gets past him once again. What a move by Chris. And Josu is going on the DRS back on the knee. A little bit of in the exit. We have the DRS and Josu and the ERS. Is it enough to get past Chris? Chris inside. Josu on the left hand side, going around the outside of Chris. Chris is understanding into his path, and Josu had no space to go. And Josu has been fallen off. And Chris still remains in second place. What a great battle we're having here for second place. And Josu, I'm sure, will be all fired up because he wants to get that move absolutely done and dusted. And Chris is not giving him any space whatsoever. And he's not giving him the time of day. So Josu, once again, is going to try and focus up on Chris Baker Jones as we go through here for the, for the for more times here in this race. And yeah, Josu is running out of time. So he needs to cut back here once again on Chris. And again, it's sort of within... What, three tenths of a bit? So here he comes. Has Josu got enough momentum? And I think he might do indeed. Chris is really struggling here. Josu is going to the right hand side. They're going to will to a will to a will once again. And Chris is on the inside. But I think Josu has got the move done, I believe. But Chris will try and force his way back on the inside, is he? No, he won't be able to. But from Chris, use the slipstream and the ERS back on Josu. He won't have enough, but he. No, he won't have enough, surely not. So he might have to wait for the next um, DRS zone, surely. Now, Chris, how's he doing on his ERS? Not that great, 30%. So he won't have enough of that, but he'll have the DRS. He's to an absolutely scrapping it out for second place here. It's a great showdown in the final stages of this race. It's an incredible scenes. Now, Chris, has he got enough on Josh? He's going back on the board with him. He's closing, closing, closing as he's left hand side. But no, Josu likes it and he's going to a little bit wide on the curve, but it's hurt his back completely. And Josu might have just got a little bit of breathing space before a brief period of time. A little bit of overset for Chris, so I think that might have been done, maybe, if Chris can stay with him. And Dutchman staying with Maestro as well, so that one's on. And Daz found Bromson are battling away too, in for 10th and 9th and 10th place. But this is our big battle that we want to watch. Chris is not giving up yet. He's gone very deep here. Very wide to hurt his exit here. And that does forget past Robinson. But yeah, Chris now within half a second. Has he got enough? No, he won't. I think really if Chris was in another try at second place, he might have saved his ERS a little bit. As Jossie's locked a little bit. And Chris is really close back up again. But yeah, as I said, Chris might have to save, he saved the ERS a little bit and go for, again on the attack for the final lap to try and get past Josu. Um, if he can do that, then that would be great. That's going to be in six tenths of Maestro once again. These two are definitely really battling it hard. But Chris, let's see if he's got a good exit from here. 
again within sort of first five minutes that gets to fix some time balance, eh? Depends how many he has, he might lose it today, he might lose um, six to Jamie if he's got too many. But once again, Chris closes up big time, he's actually got a very good run for Magnus and Beckett. So, Chris is staying with him and he's got a little bit of ERS, but I think his management of it is not good enough. But he's keeping really close with Jossie, I don't think that's the reason why. He's thinking, you know what, I'm still with him, so I think he's using it when I need to use it. And put Jossie under the biggest pressure possible. Through um, our turn once again, let's see. Chris got a very good momentum. Does it look to the inside? No, he doesn't. He'll definitely prepare himself for the next era. So these two are going wheel to wheel once again. Chris is on the outside. Now, wheel to wheel. Let's go on board with Chris. Let's see. He's got a cut back. He's going to get the inside. He's forced himself to the inside. And it might be the move done. He won't use the era as much. To the inside they go, wheel to wheel with Joss. And they go together. Joss is on the inside for the long run. How did they make a little bit of contact? Chris is very wide, but he'll have the cut back on him. Let's see what this is going to be like. Is he going to take enough through old turn one? Is he got enough momentum in that Ferrari to get past the he has? He'll have to wait for the next DRS zone. Now, here he goes, get a good exit through turn one as a Timothy jumps through the brick on the right hand side. This is that curb on the right hand side. Now, through Magus and Beckett, he's a good exit for the last part he goes. And he's got the exit he needs. He's sort of five minutes behind DRS and the slipstream. Does he use the ERS as well? He might have to do it because it's desperate times, desperate measures. This is for the Ferrari driver. It's closing, 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 but it's not enough. As we go on board with our race leader, who's been lonely in this race, really, not giving him the best of airtime. But he's looking good for the race victory today. We might want to keep with Chris and Jossi. And go through turn one once again. Chris is so close to Jossi once again. Is he dead to go for a move on the inside? Let's go on board with him. No, he won't. He's stuck behind Jossi trying to get a good exit from this left hander. Down into second gear up the third now four. And he hasn't got the exit he needs, so I think that might be over. He'll have the DRS. He'll have to be looking for here and pick up the But Jossi, I think, might have that second place all done and dusted. Now we go for the long right hander with Blue Mar Dutchman and Maestro are still battling away for fourth place. That isn't over either. Once again, Chris again, eight is behind Jossu. He might have just conceded here to Jossu here. I don't think he's going to have a good chance. Let's see how they go through Magus and Beckham. We'll see. But the gap is opening and coming up to a second now. I think Chris might have just gone, you know what? Have it. I think I'm not going to risk it anymore. And let's see what sort of exit he gets. Yeah, not enough. So the Bacon Yum, 007, the debutant here in RR Tier 2, Season 4. He's absolutely controlled this race from the start. And he got that, that pole lap, and that was incredible. But here he comes through the final corner. The debutant wins here in Britain to be our ninth different winner in RR Tier 2. What a great race from him. Josu is going to come home in second place after a great battle with Chris Magnus Jones, who takes home in third place. There's Maestro kept hold of P4. I believe he might have just about done it. Um, and he will come home in P4 for Force India. It's Force India in P4 and P5. Flying Rossi, great race by him in P6. Actually, he actually gets P5 in the end because that's the penalties. Jamie is going to come home in P7, I believe, across the line he comes. It's P7 for Jamie. Good points for the championship still, but unlucky after that first lap. Dragon Pro in eighth place. Dazfell is going to hold on to P9 here. Across the line, P9. Brumson in 10th place. Irish Racing's going to finish 11th place again. I don't think he's going to be very happy with that. He's not quite got the points. He's, he's just slightly missed out on the points each race that he's been competing in. Cross the line for him. It's a P11 for uh, Irish Racing's. Mighty Dillon, debutant as well. In 12th place. Two stops. And across the line he comes. And it's a P12 for him. Ellie Revolutions. Comes through the final corner and he can come home in 13th place. And now Ilar Bibin into the final couple of corners now, down into fourth gear. And he's going to round up our finishers here at Silverstone. And that, guys, has been your British Grand Prix here for Ilar Tier 2 Season 4. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. And if you guys want to ask the podium guys any questions, put them in the chat. And I'll see if I can ask the, the three the questions that you guys want me to ask them.
Um, but other than that, that has been your race. So there you go, the podium finishes. Debutant, the Bacon Yum 007, takes the win here. Our ninth different winner this season. And uh, the first half of the season has been absolutely crazy with different winners. And it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible, uh, the scenes. And uh, great result by the Debutant. And uh, I think those three have all deserved their podium today. Chris gives a great show with, um, with Josu. So, um, yeah, well, that's the top three. Well, great top three there. There you go, there is your qualification for the British Grand Prix. De Bacon Yum wins ahead of Josu in second place. Chris Becker Jones in third place. Everyone Maestro in P4 ahead of Flying Rosie in fifth. Great result for him by him. Definitely my driver of the day is the Flying Rosie. Sixth place for TI Dutchman, seventh for Jamie, eighth for Dragon Pro 200, ninth for Dazfell, tenth in Brumson, um, eleventh for RH Racing, twelfth for Mighty Dylan, thirteenth uh, for Ellie Revolutions, and fourteenth for Isla Bibbin. And then our non-finishers today were Midzi, unfortunately. Big hit in the championship for him. He's in, he was in 15th. And obviously Anti -be uh, Antif Beacon, 16th. Um, Palzeri and Thomas. Those four were your DNFers for this race. So let's invite the top three to the party. And let's do the podium interviews. As I said, any questions you guys have in the top three, um, just please leave them in the chat if you want to ask any questions. You right, buddy? You right? Yeah, not too bad, man. Congrats on the win. Bear with me a second. I'm just going to get Josu in the party, the, the, the other two. Josu's here now, and so is Chris. That's fantastic. Have you, have, have you guys um, included your audio? I have indeed. Yeah, yeah. That's that's good. All right. Right. Let's get on with the podium interview. So, ba the bacon yum 007. You have taken, you have taken your, first your first win of the season, of the season. and I believe and it's I your debut race, isn't it? It's your first race uh, you've actually competed in in this tier, in yeah. this um, league. Yeah. So congrats to you, man. What a performance. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, my qualifying was was uh, it was okay. I was up on I was up by four temps, and then I got kind of put off by the hat on the racing line down the hangar straight. But then I kind of spun it through um <laughs> i forgot what the term was called after the cops uh, after the hangar straight yeah and then the race well yeah, yeah. the restart didn't restart help because like yeah kind of maybe even more nervous but then i got then i got, I got, an, uh, I got an okay start a bit it was enough to yeah. hold off uh chris and then the rest of the race was just just be consistent. Be consistent. Don't, Don't get stupid get tire stupid wear and um, tire temps. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was yeah, a man. superb performance by you. A very you controlled very race. race. Um, um, was there any point in the race where you, you know, seemed, you know, you felt a bit, you know, uh, under pressure? Or, you know, for me, it looked like it was a pretty easy race for you. The start. Oh, start. no, the start. Oh. That was the worst part. Um, but then I think then, on lap. Lap six or seven, I had a lock up into turn two, and because I'm still because trying I'm to learn no traction, um, I almost spun it, so that would have been really awkward. But I managed to save it, so that was lucky. Um, and then when I came out the pits on lap 14, 13, whenever it was, I kind of got stopped behind the Ferrari of um, what's his name? Well, well, Bromson, Bromson, that's it, Bromson, yeah, yeah. So I had a little scrap with him for like two turns. two turns, and then that was my race that over, pretty much. 
That's fantastic, man. That's what a great, great race. race. And uh, in yeah, terms yeah, of, you know, you, is, that, is that your first race using um, no traction? Uh, that was my uh, first competitive league race using no traction. That's mad, man. What, what a race, what man. A race. What, 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 a, what a way to do your first race with no traction. I mean, you've won the race. Yeah. I mean, going forward into the next races, I mean, how confident are you going into the next races after after winning Silverstone? Well, Hockenheim, I I'm, don't think I'm going to be very good because that track is bad for for traction or abs um but the one track i am actually i might miss it because i'm on holiday i don't know is there a winter break or not yeah i i yeah there will be yeah okay because um, the race i'm really looking forward to is hungary because that's one track that i can definitely do with no traction and abs Oh, cool, man. Cool, cool man. So, yeah. uh, fantastic. Again, so, great yeah, result great for result. you today. And um, yeah, just keep on pushing as hard as you can. And, and you'll be looking for, you're going to be looking very good going into the next couple races. And... Yeah. Now, now on to on Josu. Josu. Right. Josu there. You right, buddy? You're right, buddy? Yeah. Right. right. P2, mate. P2, mate. Finally. What a great race great for you. Race. Got a great scrap between race. yourself and Chris. Race. Just talk about the race in general and how it went for you. Um, the start was okay. Um, in turn three, I locked up and went off track. When I rejoined, I was three wide with a Toro Rosso and a McLaren. Then the guys were, that were on my outside went off track. And when the Toro Rosso came back on track, just I smashed into me and collected a lot of people behind. And from there, I had a lot of pace in with the soft tires. And I overtook Maestro around the outside. I it was a great move, in my opinion. Then I was catching Chris. I Peter, I beat two laps, laps after him, him. And, and then I was catching I was him. him, I overtook him I overtook at the end. The end. I, didn't I didn't have, my DRS was DRS broken was from for like six laps or something like that. And when I got it back, I overtook him. And I also didn't have any penalties, so, so it was... Great race. Great race. Yeah, it was, yeah, man. It was. And um, uh, that was your uh, second uh, podium uh, of the season, wasn't it? After, I think, was it China? You got a podium? Yes. yes. Um, yeah. That's right, yeah. And you've had a few top five finishes this season as well. So you're starting to kind of pick up a little bit of momentum. Um, I finished uh, four, some very good points. Four, four times. <laughs> yeah, I can see. <laughs> I can see, actually. Um, Azerbaijan, um, Monaco, Canada, and... Uh, Austria as well. Austria as well. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've been very close to the podium, and finally you've got another podium this season. I mean, going into the next races, are you trying to, you know, do you think you've got your eyes at the podium going forward and even potentially race victory as well? Mm, yeah, I think yeah. I'm looking forward to Monza. And, I don't know, Monza will be a very good track for me. And I, I don't know. I, that's all. That's, I think so. I think so. I try to get, try to get, get podiums, podiums and try to go for a win. Go for a win. Nice man. Congrats today that's and today. keep it up, man, because um, you're doing a fantastic job so far. Right. Right. On to Chris. Chris. Hello. Finally, Chris, Finally, mate. mate. Back on the podium. podium. I mean, last yeah. podium for you was Spain. Spain. Yeah, and finally, 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 you're back there again. Just talk to me about your race and um, this, this in general. Uh, well, my race was pretty, pretty boring. I mean, I tried to get Bacon Yum at the start, but he he pulled, managed to pull away. So, and then after that, I was never gonna catch him. So, and then my race was pretty boring because at the start, obviously, there was all the carnage <laughs> behind. So I was a yeah. sort of a lonely yeah. race in the first half, and then obviously. Osu was catching me. I managed to stay ahead by pitting a bit earlier. And then obviously at the end, he had fresher tyres and was probably a little bit quicker than me anyway. So it was a good battle. I enjoyed it. I had to try to get my elbows out a bit, but he managed to get past. So fair play to him. 
Yeah, man. Yeah. And, and I think I think, I think you probably wanted a, a, a bit of a boring, boring race because race, um, because uh, uh, the last race has been, been what, what, last what, yeah. what five what, races five races a bit races hard for you in terms of being involved in collisions that aren't your fault. So finally, finally, the keeping safe. Yeah, a bit eventful. Also, my pace in the wet is not very good, so any points for me in the wet is a bonus. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, also, it also, means, I mean, mid didn't, didn't score today either. either. I mean, uh, he, yeah, I gained I think... 15 on mid and 9 points on Jamie. So I think I'm back That's into right, second, right, but I don't know what the gap is. Yeah, yeah, you'll, yeah, be, yeah. you'll be 11, 11 points behind mid uh, and... That's what I try and be. Just probably contesting three podiums, but I'm up there. I just try to be as consistent as I can be. Yeah, I mean, you've been super consistent as well. I mean, you've been scoring when you've been able to score. Um, obviously, and that's, you know, it's, it's doing you very, it's doing you very well. But it's very tight between the top three. So, looking at the top three, so looking at the top three, um, um, championship, I mean, I mean, you're just going to be trying to you're just keep it consistent because it right now, that's helping you big time, isn't it? Yeah, consistency is helping me. And then on some tracks where I've got a bit more pace than than normal hopefully i'll be on the, on the podiums and and may hopefully this season get a first win for ilr in ilr but we'll see there's a lot of quick drivers here so i have to see how it exactly, goes man. Exactly, man. exactly i mean looking at the next yeah, I mean, sort of the next half, half of the season of i mean what races season. are you eyeing I mean, what races up? Are you that, eyeing might up? that might be good opportunities um i, I don't mind a few, a few tracks really i mean the only ones i don't really like is russia i, I really like driving Japan, even though I'm on a pad, but it's it's a great track to drive. Uh, Hungary is another good one. Uh, yeah. You're gonna maximise them as the the, the, as the weeks the, they come, the, aren't you? Weeks they come, aren't you? Yeah, just take each race as it comes. That's good, man. That's good. Congratulations once again, man, and uh, keep it up. And, uh, keep it up. Thanks. All right, so that has right. been so your podium been interviews, your podium done, and dusted. interviews done, and dusted. done and dusted. And I'm just going to run up the screen right now. So, right now. So, so, I hope you guys, so have, enjoyed hope you guys have enjoyed it. And thank you for and watching. You for watching. Uh, we had about, uh, we had about 20, 22 viewers at one point, viewers so, that's point so that's incredible. So, uh, once, so again, uh, once again, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week for the German Grand Prix.